Okay, welcome to a new episode of Nate's MMA Corner. I am Nate, and if you watch my show, you're in my corner. Today's episode is a pre-fight show for UFC 195, Lawler vs. Condit for the UFC Welterweight Championship of the World. And this is the final episode of Nate's MMA Corner for the year 2015. And it is the pre-fight show for the first UFC event of 2016, January 2nd. Live on pay-per-view. Okay, so it's a pre-fight show rundown of my uh, predictions of the main card. Let's get started. The main event is Robbie Lawler, UFC welterweight champ, defending against former interim welterweight champ in the UFC, Carlos Condit. Yeah, this fight, great strikers on both sides, well-experienced veterans on both sides. Great training camps. You got American Top Team versus uh, Jackson Winklejohn, basically. And I think that this fight is a tough battle for the first couple rounds. And the third round, it's Carlos Condit by KO. I think it stays on the feet, which is a which will be a bad mistake on Robbie Lawler's part. And Robbie Lawler should. Be making this a wrestling match. I think every round he should be shooting for takedowns left and right. I think he doesn't do that. I think he wants to stand and trade with Carlos Condit and there will be a couple moments where Lawler will look good but then ultimately the cardio of Carlos Condit will uh, play a factor and the longer this fight goes the better it is for Carlos Condit and I think Carlos Condit gets uh, KO victory in round three to become the new UFC welterweight champ. Then in the co-main event in the heavyweight division we have Stipe Miocic versus Andre Orlovsky. This one I've gone back and forth on. This one could go either way because Andre could be knocked out. Stipe can get knocked out. However, I'm picking Andre Orlovsky in this because he's a former heavyweight champ. He's a veteran. He has a great training camp. He'll know how to deal with the wrestling of Stipe Miocic, who's a great wrestler. Stipe Miocic is a great boxer, and he knows how to mix things up. Yeah, this this fight is probably the closest one on the whole main card. This one's a coin toss for me. I kept going back and forth on who am I going to pick, but I'll pick Andre Arlovsky in this one. Uh, KO round one, I think, towards the tail end of the first round, Andre lands a, a lucky shot, but this fight could go so many different routes. I mean, there could be a submission, there could be a knockout. Yeah, I, I, I'll i go with Andre Olofsky, though, but I, I've met both these guys. They're both great guys. I wish them both luck. Stipe could win this, and if he wins this, I hope he finally gets a title shot. I don't think if... I, th I think if Stipe wins, they won't give him a title shot. If Andre wins, they may give him a title shot against uh, the winner of of Verdum and Velasquez. Then, uh, yeah, so I got Orlovsky, round one KO. Then, also on the main card, we have Albert Tumenov versus Lorenz Larkin. Lorenz Larkin, he's looked good in his past few fights. Of course, Lawrence Larkin's specialty is his kickboxing. Albert Tumenov is a knockout artist on his own. This one, though, I think, given Tumenov was able to knock out Alan Joban, I gotta pick Tumenov here. Tumenov, he is a guy to look out for in the welterweight division, at least in the stand-up department. I think he gets it First round, KO, catches, because we, we, we know this fight's going to be a stand-up war. Lorenzo isn't going to be shooting for takedowns. Tumenov is going to welcome that. He'll, he'll grind out for a couple minutes in the stand-up, and then eventually uh, catch Larkin, I think. Sorry, Larkin. Met you several times. You're a great guy. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going with Tumenov here. I think he, assuming his, his ground game is getting better and better, he's definitely going to be a top 10, top 15 guy to look out for 
maybe not title contention material right now, but over time he will get better, and he's still a young guy too. Then in the featherweight division, also in the main card, we have Diego Brandao versus Brian Ortega. A lot of people are picking Diego Brandao in this fight because he was the winner of the Ultimate Fighter. He, you know, had big name matchups. He's main evented uh, UFC Fight Night. Brian Ortega is one of those guys. He's kind of flying under the radar, but he has great trainers. His standout performance with Thiago Tavares, and he trains with the Gracies and his grappling extensively. And Diego Brandao, he is a grappling specialist on his own. I believe a second degree black belt. But I think Brian Ortega could deal with that and stay away from getting submitted. And I think he eventually gets uh, the decision here. I think this goes, yeah, 29 28 unanimous decision for Brian Ortega. I could see Brandau maybe winning the first round, then round two and three, Brian Ortega find his groove. Kind of similar to the uh, uh, Tiago Tavares fight. I, I think. Over time, Ortega finds the rhythm and looks better and better. Yeah, I think Brian Ortega is a talent in the featherweight division. The featherweight division is uh, got, got, got to be looking out for Brian Ortega. So I got Brian Ortega by 29-28 or 30-27 unanimous decision. Then, to kick off the main card in the lightweight division, we have... Uh, Abel Trujillo versus Tony Sims. I gotta go with Tony Sims on this one by decision. I think Abel Trujillo, he will get gassed out and worn out, and I think eventually Tony Sims just uh, starts to dominate him the last couple of rounds. But Abel is pretty tough in that first round. He almost got knocked out by Jamie Varner. And I think Tony Sims has studied good tape on Abel Trio. Tony Sims is a veteran as well. A better win-loss record than Abel Trio. And that's part of the reason why I'm picking uh, Tony Sims. But uh, Abel Trio, he's a talent. He's a beast. This fight is, I would say, probably the second closest fight on the main card. Yeah, this one I went back and forth on, but I gotta go with Tony Sims. By unanimous decision due to strikes, uh, I think it's a points match, and Tony Sims outpoints and outboxes Abel Trio. So there you have it. There is my pre-fight show for UFC 195. Stay tuned in the coming days for my post-fight show for UFC 195. And it will be my first episode of 2016. And a special shout-out. To Molly Crew, tonight's your last show. Wish you guys all the best. Uh, you're one of my favorite bands. And what a way to end a career. Uh, having this uh, final tour, wrapping up this final tour. Um, yeah, big, big Molly Crew fan. Yeah, so good luck to the rest of you guys. And can't wait to see the uh, concert video you guys put out. So until then... Yeah, and stay tuned for my next episode, the post-fight for UFC 195. So until then, see ya.